Hey, how's it going, everybody? So today the topic is Bitwarden. Now I've been using Bitwarden for a while, and originally I was using LastPass, and I kind of didn't want to do that anymore because, well, it's not open source, and I don't really like the fact that it's not open source. So I switched over to Bitwarden without really digging into it very much. I, I heard a couple people like recommend it and so far so it's been pretty good i mean it works well on my phone it works well everywhere i've used it but there's it's kind of using some technology stacks that i personally don't agree with so it's server it the, every time they present like oh you can install it on your server they always say oh just use this docker image it's on ubuntu on a docker image so like if you go to digital ocean go to Bitwarden, they have Ubuntu, but then they have it inside of a Docker image. So it's just kind of weird. And then every time they suggest for you to install it, it's always with Docker. They don't have any, you know, bare metal installation. On, on DigitalOcean, you already have like a VM image for, for a, a cloud instance, right? And then you would have Docker inside the cloud instance. So just kind of like, why, why can't I just install it, you know, bare metal. So I went to the GitHub, I was like, okay, there's got to be some instructions there. And it turns out it's running .NET Core and SQL Server in 2017. And the, the recommended development environment is Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. So me being, personally being an open source guy, I like technologies that are also open source. And .NET is kind of open source, but it hasn't always been open source. And I just really don't favor the whole Microsoft business model. And I think, you know, really adopting any other kind of technologies is really gonna just be a bad idea. In the end. Um, so that's why I just can't recommend people using Bitwarden and I'm not gonna use Bitwarden anymore. Um, yeah, which is kind of sad because it, it works pretty good, but their technologies are all um, .NET, and then a lot of the other stuff that they use is all TypeScript. Uh, I won't even get too much into depth with TypeScript, but it's just an awful idea. Transpiling uh, type, this fake TypeScript type of language into JavaScript to run it in your browser is just insane. Um, just wait for the browsers to develop the standards. Don't have a transpiler to get this. It's just crazy. Um, JavaScript developers, I'm sorry. Um, it, it's, it's terrible. It must be terrible for you to have to deal with these problems. You're running a scripting language inside a, a web browser and you have to transpile it. It's, you have to have like an automatic refresher for your transpiler. It's just crazy. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, I won't get too in depth on that. But I just think all the technology choices are pretty poor and that's why I just, I don't wanna run it. I'll, I'd rather have something that I understand and runs bare metal on my, my hardware, right? I, I have nothing against Docker. Docker is a great technology and it can have some really great use cases. And in development, that's one of the best use cases, but you should still have a direct path to do the installation, I think. So I've looked at a couple different uh, options. One is Passful. Passful, it looks like a great uh, cloud-based option and it's completely open source. They have the ability for you to install it, you know, bare metal or in Docker if you prefer. And it's using PHP as its backend technology, I assume with the front end being JavaScript, of course. And so this is something that I could personally Hack on, I could personally, you know, install it easily and run it on a Linux system with Apache, PHP, no problem. So, I mean, choosing technologies based on what you feel comfortable with is what I personally try to do. Um, I can get into a few other pieces of software that I think if people did that, it would probably uh, make the ecosystem a lot better. Um, and people could become developers as well. Um, because, you know, it, it's easier to get into these kind of technologies. So um, 
There's also another option if you don't mind Bit one password. Um, it's completely open source. They're using a bunch of different technologies, and some of them, you know, again, they're using TypeScript, but you know, I'll forgive them for for that. You know, but it's like uh, they're using Go, Rust, Python, and TypeScript. And using Go sometimes is a great a great way to go. <laughs> uh, pardon the pun, because you know, it's really fast and the language is completely weird because I, you know, if you're used to C style languages, it kind of breaks with a lot of the conventions of C style languages and does things a little bit differently. So you're going to have to relearn a lot of the stuff that you could normally just apply to a bunch of different kinds of languages. So that's a little bit of a downside, but I played around with Go and it's really fast. And I love the way that you can just install stuff and run it. And the same thing with Rust. It has its own package manager with cargo, and that's really awesome. Um, some of the stuff makes things a little bit more complicated with how they have to do declarations for variables and things like that. But as soon as you wrap your mind around it, it's easy, and you can understand why it creates a little bit of additional safety. Um, you know, the uh, memory leaks and things like that. So, yeah, this looks like... Uh, Pretty interesting project as well and you know they have you know, it seems like a pretty big company if you don't want to host it yourself this could be a good option Passbolt, you know I think is going to be where I'm going to be headed I tried Firefox Lockwise and the problem with Firefox Lockwise is that you can't even generate a password uh, with it so you have to like literally have another application that's your password generator or what they do have an Android app, um, so you could connect it to Android. So that's cool. And it's, there's just a bunch of other weird little little um, little issues with it. I, I wish I could recommend it because it's from Fire uh, Mozilla, um, but it would be so easy for them just to add a button to generate a password. I don't know why they don't do it. And there's just a few other things like being able to share a password with somebody else. You kind of need those kind of features. And I think, you know, Passbolt is kind of enterprise oriented to begin with. You're going to be able to share passwords with, say, your family members. If you have, you know, a wife or a husband or something like that, you're going to want to share a password with them. Um, one password has that same functionality. So Firefox, Lockwise, it needs that generate passwords and sharing capability. If it doesn't have that, I can't use it. So, yeah, I just wanted to make this quick video about why I think Bitwarden is probably not the best choice just because of the technology stack that they chose. Everything that they have is a ton of PowerShell and handlebars and TypeScript and TypeSQL and C Sharp and all this kind of uh, Microsoft campy technology that um, it doesn't make sense to use. I don't I don't support using that those technology stacks because they they're not open to begin with and they're kind of like pushed into being open um in a non-open kind of infrastructure. So I know not everybody would would agree with that, but uh I would rather have my whole technology stack be one hundred percent open and from a bunch of little individuals rather than one huge conglomerate company like Microsoft. So PHP was developed by some, some one guy and just exploded into this uh, kind of organically growing and improving kind of language. And it's great for web. Um, people try to use it for other things, but for web, that's where it's, it shines. And I think it's an it's a easy language to get in if you want to do some web development. You don't need any special technology pseudo app, install PHP, uh, and then you know you can run a PHP script in just a couple of seconds, like three lines of code. You have a hello world example, whereas other examples aren't quite as easy. And I think for web, it's already, you know, it already has a templating engine built into PHP. I don't want to make this why I like PHP, but if you are somebody who likes open source, 
PHP is open from the start and it just has that open source vibe to it. That's why I think you should choose the technologies also based on what their program. So uh, that's the end of my, my little spiel, my rant, whatever you want to call this. Uh, you guys take it easy.